Hi, I'm Mike Brady, your state senator, and I'm here to talk about what the issues are of the day and what's important to my constituency. Uh, I'm the state senator currently from the second Plymouth and Bristol district. Next year, if I'm successful and reelected, the district's going to change a little bit, and we've brought a map with us, and I'll show you the map. It's going to be called the Second Plymouth and Norfolk District. And here's a little map about the new district. So I'm going to continue to represent all of Brockton, uh, all of Whitman, Hanson, East Bridgewater, Halifax, and I'm also going to be gaining Avon and part of Randolph in the district. So those will be the two new towns that I will represent if I'm successful and get reelected in this coming election, which the primary will be the day after Labor Day, and then the November election will follow. But before I go on, I want to first um, make a little mention. We lost a great friend to our community recently, a firefighter, Lieutenant Michael Mahoney. He uh, died helping clean his father's house out. His father had just recently passed away a short while ago. And he was a great firefighter, great community activist, and, and a friend and a brother to all of us in the community. It was a tough loss for the Brockton community, and also I want to thank all the firefighters that showed up in Brockton and the surrounding towns, as well as all the police officers that helped with the traffic details and all that, because um, we traveled to visit some of the fire stations that he had worked at, and eventually went down to a uh, Pine Hill Cemetery where he was buried recently in West Bridgewater. So my heart and prayers go out to the family, and uh, just remember to keep Mr. Mahoney, in your prayers, he was a lieutenant on the Brockton Fire Department, and he served from 1996 when he was first appointed till the untimely of his death on February 14th of this year, 2022. So God bless you and the family, Mr. Mahoney, lieutenant from the Brockton Fire Department. He was a great gentleman and a friend to all of us and, and a hardworking member of the Brockton Fire Department. So God bless you. Uh, first of all, before I go on to talk about some of the legislation that we passed, I want to introduce... One of my newest hires on my team in the State House, uh, our new communications director, Miyoshi Lamore. And Miyoshi just came on board recently. And uh, Miyoshi, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a little about, about yourself, please. Hey, hi, everyone. My name is Miyoshi Lamore. I'm 22 years old. I'm a first gen Haitian American. Um, I am the newest communications director for Senator Brady. I've been, I was raised in Randolph, Brockton is my home. From K through eight, I went to private schools in Brockton. I'm currently finishing up my college degree um, for crime and justice studies with a minor in black studies at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. I started working six weeks ago. Um, I've learned so much in the past six weeks. I am honored and I thank you for the opportunity to work alongside with you. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity, and I'm excited to see where everything where everything goes and what the future holds. Thank so, you, Miyoshi. Thank you. And you've been a great addition to our team uh, with my team of uh, help in the state house. I have uh, Aldi Girolamo, who's my chief of staff, and I have a few other legislative aides. And uh, I always need help with communications and technology, and you've been <laughs> a great addition to the state house. So I appreciate thank you. that. And uh, you did live in Brockton for a while as well, and you have family here as well as Randolph. So I appreciate you coming on board. You've been a great addition to our staff in Thank the State House. And, and you can probably teach me a little things about technology. Absolutely. So that, that'll be very helpful. So welcome aboard. Thank you. And a couple of things I want to mention on legislation that we've been working on and we passed. Uh, obviously, we're going to be dealing with the budget coming up. The governor did recently release his budget and it's gonna to go to the House of Representatives, and then it goes to the Senate where we'll be dealing with the budget. I'm gonna be meeting with my uh, chair of the Ways and Means Committee, Mike Rodericks. I serve on the Ways and Means Committee, and I'm also chairman of public service as well. So we're gonna be giving him our wish list. And again, if anybody has any ideas you think we should be doing at the State House or legislation, please don't hesitate to contact us. My office number is 617 722-1200, and my email is michael.brady at masenate.gov, michael.brady at masenate.gov. We do get a lot of correspondence 
into the state house, usually when there's a hot topic that's important to a lot of residents and constituents. And we have a wide range of issues we deal with every day. Of course, funding for the district is important, school funding, fun funding for public uh, safety and so forth. And I represent a very diverse community, as I was showing you on the map, and I'll show it to you again. The district currently is the Plymouth-Bristol district, which includes the town of Northeastern and the town of Hanover. But with redistricting next year, it'll be the, all of the city of Brockton, Whitman, East Bridgewater, Hanson, Halifax, all of Avon, and part of the south side of uh, Randolph. So if there's anything important, I know that you know water is always an issue. I know that the city council did recently go down and visit the desalinization plant in Dighton. It, water issues and quality of water is always an issue. We'll be addressing that not only for Brockton, but surrounding towns. But there's other issues, and some things we passed recently I want to talk about. The Senate unanimously passed a homeless ID and relative adoption bills. And this is a Massachusetts Senate unanimously passed legislation to make state identification more accessible to people experiencing homelessness. And it's going to help also to help people get adopted more easily because there's a lot of children there that are trying to get access to adopting and it's a tough road, you know. Uh, people lose their parents, they don't have anybody to keep an eye on them. Uh, many other issues arise and we passed this adoption bill as well. A Couple other things we passed, the Senate passed the Mental Health ABC Act. And this act is driven by the recognition that mental health is as important as physical health for every resident of the Commonwealth and should be treated as such. The bill proposes a wide variety of reforms to ensure equitable access to mental health care and remove barriers to care by supporting the behavioral health workforce. And we've been suffering through a tough pandemic with corona, but mental health is still out there and it's a major issue and there's so many people dealing with mental health issues. So this is important legislation that we passed. And also pharmaceutical access, and this is an important thing. As we know, people even with diabetes, they, um, they have a tough time getting access to their pharmaceutical products and so forth, and we've passed some legislation, it's called the PACT Act, and this will put a cap on prescription drug costs or different things to treat diabetes like insulin. You know, people are suffering with the high cost of health costs every day and they're suffering to get their prescriptions and some families have to decide to either put food on the table to get a prescription, especially our elderly population, our less fortunate population. So this is an important thing in increasing patient access and lowering costs. It's so important. And this is a great piece of legislation that we passed, and it's so important to take care of our constituents. And um, before I go on, is there anything else that you think that we should talk about adding? I know that, like, though I represent Brockton, I know Randolph has some water issues, but you lived in Brockton, too. And um, anything that you can think of that we could add that, that's important legislation coming up? I know we talked about funding and the budget, um, but anything else that you can think of off the top? Not off the top of my head, but All right. come back to me. Well, as I mentioned, please don't hesitate to contact my office. It's open and accessible to everyone. Uh, I meet with constituents all over the district. I like meeting with people one-on-one. -on -one. I know there's been a little delay with everything because of the coronavirus and the pandemic that we've suffered through. Hopefully, as the numbers go down, we can make things more accessible. The state house is open. It's been open to legislators and staff, but it didn't get open to the public till just recently, uh, March, uh, February 22nd. So it is open. If you want to come in and visit me in Boston, you're welcome to, or if you want me to visit you in the district, which is probably easier than it is coming into Boston with traffic, I'm happy to meet with anybody in the district, and I'm always accessible. That's why the name of the show is Brady Works. I'm known as a working class representative. I grew up in a humble community in Brockton, my father worked in construction and my mother used to stitch in the factories downtown. They never had the opportunity to own their own home and I'm fortunate I am a homeowner, I'm a taxpayer like most of the people listening today and I know what it's like, you know, when things are tough, it's been tough for a lot of families. So we want to make sure we get enough funding and proper legislation to support the constituents of our district. That's why I mentioned before and I continue to mention the Student Opportunity Act, highest increase of funding for public education in the history of the Commonwealth. It's been so important, and it got put on hold because of COVID last year, but now it's going to be fully implemented in a more timely manner. And I'm a big supporter of public education and our colleges, too. We have Massasoit Community College here in Brockton, 
and we have Bridgewater State College. Some students are able to go a couple years at Master Sergeant and use those credits to transfer to Bridgewater State. Or we have Stonehill College in the area. Or if they decide to go to other schools in Boston or whatever. A couple other things we, we were able to pass was the American Rescue Plan Act, no, known as the APA spending bill. And I was very fortunate to get some earmarks. It was $2.5 billion in available American Rescue Plan in a total of $3.66 billion spending. We've utilized some of that money as legislators. I got money for the, for the whole district, uh, for different avenues that was needed, public safety, for other things. Um, for veterans, we, we did a veterans memorial that's gonna be moved in Whitman. We got some money for a soccer field and we continue to get more money for the district. This, fortunately, despite everything else we've gone through these past couple of years, um, the revenue is up in the Commonwealth, which is good news, so hopefully we can deliver more revenue to cities like Brockton and the surrounding towns that I represent. But this APA money was so important, and uh, you know we passed federal funds for accountability, as I mentioned, the World War I veteran, clinical space for substance abuse, and as I mentioned earlier, just because of the COVID, situation has been going on. It doesn't stop people with addiction issues and substance abuse issues. We see people on the streets every day. We have to continue to address that. And it goes hand in hand with mental health. I know some people that probably would have never touched a drug in their life or an illegal substance. Unfortunately, because of the um, Oxycontin and the prescription drugs that they became addicted to, they end up turning to heroin. And we've lost too many lives out there. And it is still a, a, a devastating impact that it has had on our community that affects people every day. So we have to continue to address that. School on Wheels, I was able to get some money in the budget for that. I know in Brockton, East Bridgewater, they utilize a lot of that. And again, some families, that the, the only time they eat is when they're going to school during the day. So School on Wheels helps provide extra meals for families that are less fortunate. It's so important. Um, and a couple other things that we passed, as I mentioned, uh, genocide education bill, you know, we cannot forget our history. And if we don't learn from the, our history, the cliche is we will doom to repeat it in the future. And we passed a genocide education bill, and we also put a trust fund together to educate students in the history of genocide. And this will promote and educate middle and high school students on the history of genocide. And this is not just for what happened during when Nazi Germany controlled Nazi would with all the Jewish people that had perished, but many other families that have suffered all over the world. And even our own country, we have to learn from our history so we, we don't repeat that. We also passed nutrition bills and for healthy youth, and this is so important that we educate students on healthy eating. Now, we all gotta eat healthy. I gotta eat healthy myself. Sometimes, you know, with our busy schedules, we're eating on the road and we don't always eat the right foods, but. It's so important if you're starting at a younger age, it's, it's much more better when they get older that they'll continue to eat and, and live a healthy lifestyle. And that's so important. Uh, in transportation infrastructure, now we passed and authorized $300 million for funding for transportation. And I joined with my colleagues, $200 million for municipal roads and $100 million to support statewide projects to address congestion, support electric vehicles, you know, uh, our atmosphere, we're polluting it every day. We have to address that issue. We're trying to move forward with more clean, renewable energies and electric vehicles is, is happening now. It's not even the way of the future. I know so many people that have purchased electric vehicles, but we need more charging stations. And Boston has a lot, but we don't have as many down here on the South Shore like Brockton and other communities. We are getting funding to help put in charging stations for people so they can charge their car and they can drive quite lengthy trips, hundreds and hundreds of miles, before they have to recharge their vehicle. And that helps save our environment. And it's so important. And then the Chapter 90 money. As, as we've seen, our roads are in deplorable condition. Every time we go through the winter and the weather warms that, you know, you see potholes constantly, you see tar coming up, you see other things. It's crazy out there. And it, and it damages your vehicles, too. So we have to keep these roads safety. People have to drive to work every day or go to the market whatever the needs of transportation is, it's so important that we pass this infrastructure money. And we are expected to get more federal money, too, from the federal government. And none of us do it alone. We have to work with our federal delegation. Currently, I serve with three congressmen, Congressman Steve Lynch, Congressman Keating, and another congressman from Easton. With the redistricting, I will no longer have Easton in the district next year. 
Aachen class was that congressman's name, but uh, I will be still serving in, in Congressman Ayanna Presley also will be in the new district in representing Randolph. And I will be representing the town of Randolph with Senator Walter Timothy, who's done a fine job representing Randolph. And then Bruce Ayers and Mr. Driscoll also represent on the State House side of uh, Randolph. But we're here to talk about Brockton. I know our elderly people have had a tough time, especially living in the high rises. Um, I'm working with the Brockton Housing Authority. We have plans to renovate the Campolo high rise A and, Bill, A and B buildings. I know the Kennedy building on Kennedy Drive, that needs major infrastructure work. So we're hoping to get some state funding for this as well as federal funding and local funding. But it's so important and we could not survive in Brockton without the help of the state and the federal government. Thank goodness that we have a great working relationship because I mentioned no one does it alone. Um, I've got a great relationship with our fellow state delegation, um, Representative Jerry Cassie, Representative Michelle Dubois. I know Claire Cronin uh, was a majority leader. She just became the ambassador to Ireland, which is a great endeavor. We wish her the best of luck. It's a great honor to have somebody that grew up in Brockton and became a majority leader in the state house, first woman majority leader in the history of the Commonwealth. She now is the ambassador to Ireland. Great news for her, great for her family. We wish her the best of luck, but it's tough for us because we lost a great leader in the state house. So there is gonna be a open seat to fill that seat. The district on the house is changing as well. So as I mentioned, the Senate district is changing, and the house district is changing, and the inner core of the city is gonna be where that open seat is. I served that area once. It was a majority minority district. I was the first one from Brockton to serve that district. And now it's gonna be an open seat. So there's a couple potential candidates running for that seat. We'll know closer when we get to the deadlines who's gonna be on the ballot and who's gonna be running for that seat. But I ask our constituents, please pay attention because it's so important. Voting is so important. People think their vote doesn't count. Some races on a school committee race in Wood two years ago was decided by three votes and one of my state house representative seats was decided by 14 votes. So your vote does count. If you're not registered to vote, you need to contact me. We can get you the proper paperwork to register to vote. We, we passed legislation for early voting again this year. So if you cannot get to the polls on election day, again, the primary is gonna be the day after Labor Day. We had to work it because of so many other holidays around that time. And then the final election will be on November. As we get closer to the dates, there'll be more advertisement and more information about that. But again, if you moved out of your old neighborhood, moved into a new neighborhood, or you're new to Brockton, if you need voter registration forms, you can contact the Elections Department at City Hall, or you can contact me. And again, my office is 617-722-1200. So that's a little bit. And Miyoshi, I just want to, and uh, well, one last thing too. We did pass a $261.6 million supplemental budget. Because again, more revenue came into the Commonwealth, so we're working to get that revenue back into the cities and towns like Brockton, Whitman, Hanson, the surrounding towns that I represent. So important. And again, if something is important to you coming up with the budget that we're going to be dealing with, by the end of June, as I mentioned, the governor put it forth, it goes to the House, and then it comes to the Senate. If there's anything important to you in the budget, if we can work it in there, we'll do our best to make sure we uh, fill the needs of the, of the city of Brockton here and the surrounding towns I represent. It's so important. And uh, I know it's been tough on our elderly. I, I want to thank Janice Fitzgerald and the people at the Council on Aging. You know, they've been helping a lot of elderly people out if they haven't been able to open up the council and aging, they've been going to visit people in their homes or helping them with tax issues, with other issues. And again, they're, uh, they're always at your beck and call like myself, and they've been doing a great job. And I want to thank them because it's been probably toughest on our elderly population. You know, when, unfortunately, when the governor and his administration were changing their minds with vaccines, or where to get the vaccines, or where to get testing, Luckily, we had Sue Josh, who did a yeoman's job getting the vaccines at the Shaw Center in Brockton and making it more accessible. I know they had testing at Massasoit, but the lines were out into Route 27, and then they, they ran out of vaccines or testing kits, so we needed to get more. And, and Sue Josh, the Neighborhood Health Center, and the Mayor's Office, all of us working together to make sure we have an adequate supply of vaccines and test kits to residents. And the Brockton Emergency Management group, they're, they're located on uh, West Elm Street. They have a supply at the War Memorial Building. Steve Hook, who lives in Brockton, runs that. He and his staff are doing a yeoman's job.
to get adequate test kits or vaccines to people. And again, it's no cost to the residents as long as it isn't abused. And people, we don't want people to get vaccine kits or testing kits and then they sell them on the black market, the illegal market. These are for residents are in most need of that. In, in again, it's for the residents of Brockton and they have open to sometimes people that work in Brockton that may not live in Brockton, so that helps out too. But it's been tough on the surrounding towns. I know in Whitman at one point, at the Knights of Columbus, they initially had the first batch of vaccines and this was going back over a year ago. Then the administration changed their mind and say, you gotta go to Foxborough. And it's tough enough for me to go to Foxborough when there's not even a Patriots game going on. Never mind somebody who's quite old than me, a senior citizen who they're lucky to take their car to the market once a week. Never mind going to Foxborough. So we've addressed that. We have meetings once a week with my staff, with the mayor's office, with a lot of the hospital leadership in the community here between Signature Healthcare, uh, the old kind of cushion Good Samaritan, the VA hospital, the Mainspring Father Bills in the neighborhood health center and the mayor's office. So every week we're on these Zoom meetings to address these issues. Luckily, the numbers have started to come down, which is good. We're starting to get things back open, but we still have to protect ourselves. And um, just I adhere to the experts out there. I'm certainly not a scientist. Um, I know a lot of people want choices, want to choose what they want to do with their lives, whether they want the vaccine, whether they don't want the vaccine, whether they want to wear a mask. But again, I listen to the experts out there. I'm certainly not a scientist and I trust the scientists out there. And I know people were reluctant to get the polio vaccine in the 1950s. If not for Elvis Presley getting the vaccine, people weren't feeling comfortable with it. Now they are, so that's helpful. But um, Yoshi, I'm, I'm grateful you're on board with us now. You've been a great addition to my staff. And I know you'll do a great job as a communications director. Thank and, you. I, and I mentioned earlier, you're much more a student <laughs> and smarter than I am on communication <laughs> skills with technology. As we know, we have these cell phones that are like computers now. There's everything on here. But um, with all the resources out there with technology, we have to do our best to reach out to the public, to let them know what's going on. You know, I have a Facebook page and I have some other things. But again, the Internet, there's so many websites out there. And um, we try to get the truth out there and facts because sometimes there's a lot of misinformation out there. And, Please don't fall for the misinformation. I know anybody can go on a website and get information whether they should take the vaccine or not. Trust your doctor, trust your scientist, please. And um, Miyoshi, again, thank you for coming thank on you board for with me today. Me. Um, I know you're going to be a great addition. You've already done a yeoman's work and you've educated me with some things with technology. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all the help you're going to give to our staff and to our constituency because the number one is working for our constituents. Absolutely. And we have a very diverse community we represent. Brockton has always been diverse. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, um, Randolph and Avon is gonna be coming on part of the district as of next year. So if I'm successful, still serving next year, Randolph has become a very diverse community. And I look forward to representing Randolph and Avon. I have a lot of friends from these towns and I know uh, I look forward to representing them. But I wanna hear from you, the constituents, what's important to you? Um, you know, sometimes if there's a hot button issue, people will contact the office, but when things are quiet, they don't necessarily contact us. And even if you're happy with something we're, we're doing, I do appreciate some accolades once in a while, because you, you don't hear about the good news all the time. Sure. It's like sometimes in the media, unfortunately, we hear the bad news, but I want to hear from you, the constituents, because I work for you, you're my boss. So again, my number is 617-722-1200. 617-722-1200. And my email is michael.brady at ma for Massachusetts, michael.brady at masenate.gov, no spaces. Please contact us. And as I mentioned before, it's been a tough week. I know we, we've, you know, every day we're losing people in our district. And I know the older we get, it's more tougher because we lose people, but um, our heart goes out to Mike Mahoney's family. Um, it was a great loss to our community, and we've lost some other people too. We lost a, a firefighter as well that served in New York on September 11th, and uh, that service was recently this week. And also Lou Tarantino, who was a World War II veteran, uh, he just recently passed away. He was an icon, he was a prisoner of war. And if not for a German soldier giving him little rations of whether it be candy or little things to keep him alive, he wouldn't have never still been here with us all them years. He lived to be 99 years old. God bless him and his family. But 
he always never forgot where he come from. He planted flags during Veterans Day at the cemeteries for the veterans during Memorial Day. He marched in the parades. He could still fit in his World War II uniform. He was in better shape than myself. And, um, but he survived. He was a prisoner of war in Germany and he escaped and luckily he wasn't killed over there and he came back and he you know, raised a son in the community and um, he was a great icon and, and a hero to us in the community. So please remember our veterans out there, especially in light of what's going on in the world. So again, I'm Mike Brady. This is Brady Works. I thank you for listening to us and watching us on cable today. God bless you.